Hey there, and welcome to The Meaningful Way. And I have got some exciting news to share with you. The Meaningful Way is moving. We're moving to a bigger platform called One Idea Away. One Idea Away is a community of sorts devoted to inspire and empower individuals to live more fully, deeply, and consciously. And as part of that, the Meaningful Way podcast is actually becoming the One Idea Away podcast. We're going to publish here on The Meaningful Way until October 10th, but as of the 10th, we will be fully moved over. We're going to continue to explore the ideas, insights, stories, and wisdom of our extraordinary guests. We realize that each have had that one idea, that one moment, that one experience that truly fundamentally shifted them and opened them up to being more aligned to their true self, living more deeply and meaningfully. We're going to continue to bring those guests to you, and I look forward to continuing to serve you through One Idea Away. So do me a favor, use the search feature in whatever app you're using to listen to this and search for One Idea Away so that you do not miss a single episode and you join and continue the conversation with us. Thanks so much for listening to The Meaningful Way, and I look forward to you joining One Idea Away. With that... Back to our regularly scheduled interview. This is The Meaningful Way. I'm your host, Luke Iorio. We talk a lot about how we can live more meaningful lives and grow ourselves on this show. You hear from some amazing guests who are having a great impact on others in the world. And today, I want to take it into the world of entrepreneurship and how business can be used for social impact and to solve significant world problems. To do that, I've invited serial entrepreneur Aaron O'Sullivan to the show to talk about his entrepreneurial journey and how he's now using his businesses and showing other entrepreneurs how to use their businesses to make a meaningful difference in the world. Aaron O'Sullivan is a serial entrepreneur who has been building brands on Amazon since 2013, scoring several million in product sales. He has spent the last three years building teams based in the Philippines, helping scale up one team to 45 staff by building all of the Amazon systems and processes to run multiple brands. Aaron also works with six and seven figure Amazon e-commerce entrepreneurs to focus on systemizing their business and attracting and hiring talent from the Philippines to help grow their income as well as their impact. Aaron is out to change the way that business is played and consumers spend. With his sister, Aaron co-founded a superfood company called Be Love Body, which provides two nutritious meals to children in the Philippines for each product sold. His passion lies in working to help end child suffering through everything that he does in business. He believes that the world's biggest problems will be solved by entrepreneurs, and it's his mission to unlock the incredible potential in 3,000 businesses by the year 2020. Aaron strives to help entrepreneurs do more meaningful work, which is what brings us to today's conversation. Aaron, welcome to The Meaningful Way. Hi, Luke. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited about being here today. Awesome. I think maybe the place to begin is uh, to talk a little bit about how you leapt into entrepreneurship, uh, because I think entrepreneurship and the idea of being in, in business for ourselves is something that is very alluring to a lot of people, uh, but there's a whole lot of uncertainty and a whole lot of risk that can be associated with it. So I'm curious, what was it that enabled you to finally make that leap into entrepreneurship and, and how did those early years go? Okay, great. So, uh, Basically, I started out in 2013. I was working in the far northwest of Australia in a mining region called the Pilbara. It's one of the hottest places in the world. And I was there for two and a half years. Uh, I was doing it to get my visa so I could, I could live permanently in, in Australia. Mm. And I was working in construction at, at the time, working as a, a drywall pastor. I know you guys call it drywall in the States. Right. Um, basically, basically, I was over there and I just happened to um, stumble across an opportunity to get sponsored and stay. Um, the drywall working I learned from my dad it was only really um, a short term thing. It was just a means for them to get me in the country, into Australia. And basically, in that process, I was in this mining town working 12 hour days outside a lot of the time in yeah, really harsh conditions. And sure. I kind of realized okay, this is not 
this is not for me on the long term. And I, it was always a short term thing, but it kind of pushed me to look online for opportunities. Hmm. And I started to dabble with uh, marketing and affiliate marketing. And along came an opportunity on uh, e-commerce and, and physical products and, and creating brands on Amazon. So it really resonated with me straight away. Uh, and I, I, I kind of just you know, snapped up all the courses and really digested everything that I could and just started taking huge action um, when I was working this, this, this full-time job as a, a drywall plasterer. So I'd get home, and it was really the, the push of, okay, there's infinite opportunity out there, and there's infinite scale with access to millions, and if not billions, globally. I knew that if I start to tap into uh, the global marketplace, then good things are going to happen, right? So in that, in that uh, process, I just, again, just went all in. I'd get home from work at half six, half seven, and then I'd work till two, three in the morning each and every day. Uh, and it took me mm-hmm. five months to finally quit my job and my income. Um, it was still a risk at that point, but it was, you know, I, I went all in and um, my income was matched by my, my side project, which was my first, my first business online, which was selling uh, products on Amazon. So uh, that's, that's initially how I got started. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, with the initial traction that I had, I, um, you know, it, it really pushed me, it really let, elevated my beliefs that I could, you know, take the next, the, the next step forward and, and to really start to realize some of my, my greatest dreams. I think it comes down to the process of having, you know, having a vision uh, and taking action, getting a result, and then thinking, ah, oh, you know, mm-hmm. it's a positive a positive re- reinforced cycle right? and that's that's initially how it started went to uh, a live event over in Austin Texas around uh, at Amazon selling I met a partner of mine we we went out and we uh, we, we had a great time uh, after the event and the next day was like you know what let's, let's create a business together we just literally know each other a day but we uh, we kind of hit it off and we uh, decided to create a a, a business together. He was already doing really well on Amazon and on e-commerce. He flew over to the Philippines to start to build his team. Um, from that point there, I joined him and we started to build a team for five. Mm. And uh, basically in that process, I interacted with a lot of street children, a lot of orphans, and, mm. and saw real poverty over in, in the Philippines. And you now I was thinking, I knew exactly in that instant what I wanted to do, and it was to use business as a force of good to uh, to help end child poverty in the next in the next twenty years, and that's that's what I'm all about, and that's that's what I'm uh, committed to. You know, making a, a difference in, in that area. This is an extra- extraordinary cause, and and I actually want to ask you more about that in a moment. But a couple of things I wanted to highlight for everybody. Uh, you know, a few of the things when you dove in, you were diving in, you were studying, you were researching, you were doing everything you needed to 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 get your arms wrapped around what it was that you were trying to do, and that you really kind of had the side hustle going, meaning you were still working full time. Uh, you weren't in some you know cushy position where you could just you know take a year, two years, three years to be able to figure this all out. You were doing it while you were still working crazy amount of hours in a lot of heat and really exhausting yourself uh, to be able to do it and. I guess, and one of the other things I, just, I wanted to also highlight was then when you connected to the Amazon affiliate programs, the 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 uh, partner that you ended up meeting, is that you had somebody there who had that experience, a little bit of that mentorship that could take you then to the next level of, of not just what you've studied, but how it's really working. Uh, a couple of really good best practices there. I guess the one question I have for you is you mentioned that vision that helped you know really drive you forward, implement the action. And, and, you know, stay connected to that purpose. I'm just curious, what was, what was it that, that you saw in that vision for yourself or for your business in the very early days that enabled you to harness the amount of commitment, the amount of drive that it took to work the number of hours and to, to you know, spend the amount of time that you, you did to really make this happen? Yeah, so initially, it's, it really happened the first time I went to the Philippines, I was in an office with my, my business partner and we were talking about different ways of how we can how we can really start making a difference on a small scale and it really just clicked. It kind of all came together. Mm. It kind of walked into my mind fully formed of how I wanted to use physical products as a way to to really start connecting the benefactors, the people that actually are going to be you know get benefit from uh, entrepreneurs and companies selling products with the actual consumers 
and it was really, uh, it really kind of just popped into our into both our minds, and from there it was it was absolute. It was exactly what I wanted to do, mm. and through attending many personal development events and seminars and workshops from the likes of like Tony Robbins, I knew that I had a powerful vision and for me to stay connected to that with why it was just all about habit, right? Mm. And that drive, you know, that's that's the focus of really connecting with my, my big why on a regular basis each and every week and you know three few times through the week just to you know reflect, check in and see where are we going? Are we heading towards that vision? Uh, I'm, it's, it's kind of like a mountaintop, right? Yeah. I know that it's going to be, uh, you know, if you think about Everest and all the, all the stops along the way to the, the, the peak, it's you know, just like a mid-course check-in. Mm-hmm. How are we going? If, as long as I'm keeping an eye on that mountain, I'm slowly making progress towards it, um, it's never going to be a direct route. If I keep checking in and keep making progress, I know, you know I'm guided. It's, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to use everything in my... In my uh, my talent in my in my being is a force of good. I know it's going to be a, a guided process, and we'll get there. But um, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. But mm-hmm. it's really that that regular regular check in and just a regular. Uh, connection to my big why. You know, it's a, it's a key perspective because there's there's a lot of us that are out there that have these big visions. It's something that we want to do, but it's always about, we'll, you know, we'll do that one day, or I wish I could do that earlier. I wish I had the time for that. And what you're talking about is that have that vision, connect to that vision, meaning connect and see it and feel it on a regular basis, but take action from that place. And even if it's only just small steps, if you do a couple of things each week that somehow begin to move you forward, you're going to feel the progress of that. And the vision is going to become that much more believable. You're going to have that much more commitment to it. And you'll, you know, you'll really be able to boost yourself uh, in that type of direction. Uh, and it sounds like that's what happened for you. And then it, it accelerated <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. Um, because it, it, you know, you're Absolutely. only talking about 2013. You're not talking about a whole, a whole long time ago to be doing the work that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you made a very valid point around how to really envision and connect to a big why. And it's really important because if we don't really envision it and see it and feel it and touch it and smell it in a way like we're there, we can, you know, I, I do this with, uh, in, in part of my morning ritual each, each and every day, uh, you know, and, and on a weekly basis, checking is really envision myself like I've already achieved it and where we're going. And that really does create some incredible pull and it's, you know, for you to go and do anything. Yeah. And even, you know, sometimes, you know, of course, I get off track um, where sometimes I won't connect with it for a couple of weeks. And when I do end up connecting with it, it's an emotional experience. Yeah. You know, there's nothing there's nothing more. And I'm sure you guys that are listening, are, you know, many of you will be doing the same or similar thing and Luke, be sure you, you will have too, but it's it's an incredible way to, to get that forward momentum mm-hmm. and to pull you out, even when you're, you know, you act. It helps you act in spite of fear, worry, doubt, and even when you're not in, in the mood to do it. So yeah. it's uh, super powerful. Absolutely, absolutely. So t- tell me a little bit about how did Be Love Body start to come about with your sister? Absolutely. So. When I was in the Philippines for uh, the first time, I mentioned that, um, again, there was a lot of street children, a lot of orphans, and it was, it really uh, hit a chord of my heart, and I was like, wow, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is not okay. So there was, uh, at that point, it really, it, you know, my life changed in that instant. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. But when I was in the Philippines, I've been back and forth a lot of times, and it really came around of, okay, we're going to create a superfood brand Anyway, how about integrating, giving into it to help these children? And it was really kind of crazy how it happened, if I'm completely honest. I, through a mutual friend, I got connected to a lady called Jane Walker, and she got an MB from the Queen for her work that she done mm-hmm. in, in Manila around, uh, around supporting these children. So basically, I connected to her, and she's really become kind of a mentor for me, and uh, she's just an incredible woman who spent her life and devoted her life to these people in Manila who live on this huge rubbish dump. It's called Smoky Mountain, and 50,000 people live on this. Uh, it's been there for 50 years, and basically they hand saw all of the rubbish that comes out of Manila. There's a few, there's a few sites, dump sites around Manila, but this is one of the, the biggest and the oldest. 
So James set up an incredible foundation called the Purple Community Foundation out of Smoky Mountain, and she started to build schools there to help these children and support these children so they could go to school, learn, and eat at school instead of them having to pick rubbish to survive that particular day. And uh, children are generally three years old, sit through rubbish and, and all sorts. So we connected and we, we kind of hit it off and we decided this is where we're going to begin on our journey of contribution to these children. Um, we, uh, in March, we went and flew up. Our team, we have a team, uh, there's eight of us, we flew them from their town in, uh, in the southern part of Manila up to uh, the capital Manila and uh, sorry, we flew up in the southern part of the Philippines to Manila and we, we had an incredible experience. It was one of the most emotional things we've, we've ever done as a team uh, to take uh, all of our team members to go and connect with these incredible, inspiring children that literally don't have anything yeah. but uh, you know, we went there and learned and connected with them and really took away so much of you know, we, we, so many lessons that we got yeah. from that experience. But it was a real, real beautiful uh, thing for us to go and experience, and it put more fel- uh, fire in our bellies to go ahead, go forth, and really start to realise our, our our visions with the contribution for these kids. Yeah. That's it's absolutely extraordinary. You know, it's and it's it's one of the things that I would encourage so many you know listeners out there is find ways to to broaden your worldview. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to travel to the the other side of the world, but broaden it beyond wherever you are used to being. Go see. Uh, communities and sections of the country or sections of the world that you normally don't have exposure to and be able to learn what's there, learn what the the rest of the world is going through and looks like. Uh, Because I I think you're, you know, Aaron, I think you're spot on. It's something that when you see some of this, it just pulls you in in such an extraordinary way. And it's not just what they're going through in terms of the, the disadvantage and the challenge and the struggle they're going through. But as you said, the inspiration that, that in this case, these children uh, actually are and the way in which they are moving themselves forward despite the odds. Uh, it's something that you want to you want to be there for them uh, with 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 being able to see that. So, Absolutely. It was a, it was truly um, incredible experience. And again, I, like Luke, I urge anyone to get out there and, and really explore and broaden your eyes because it really does open up uh, so, many, so many incredible channels up in your mind. But the... Uh, one of the things that we heard, it was really incredible. I mean, this place is a huge rubbish dump, right? So you can imagine the smell of the place. It's extraordinary. I've never smelled anything like it in my, in my whole entire life. It's, everyone's working around, walking around with no shoes on. There's flies, like, everywhere. And, you know, there's one guy we heard on, when we was walking out of the dump site after we visited the school, we had a great time with kids, and we went to see and have fun with them, really, just connect with them. When we left, we was walking out of the dump site, and we heard... A guy, he was covered in, you know, basically trash. He had like all this. You know, he'd been wading through written bags of and plastic out. He was covered in like rotting pieces of food and stuff, and flies everywhere. And he was expect he was happy. And one of our team heard him shout. And he kind of sang. And he said, uh, "It's a beautiful life." And you, you know, I looked at him, and he meant it. He was absolutely. You know, he meant every single word of what he said. And that really, it really hit a big point in my in my heart. Wow, this guy is, he's happy, he's fulfilled right now. He's a, he's a happy man. Wow. He has, from, from our perspective, he doesn't have anything. But he, he has everything, yeah. right? Yeah. It was, uh, you know, incredible to see him. That was, you know, to leave on that note, it, it just, it was just emotional. That's, uh, that's an incredible uh, mental and emotional image. Uh, of of that situation that's extraordinary you know one of the one of the things i know that is is core to your beliefs it's core to your practice uh is that you know entrepreneurs have this ability to to solve some of the world's biggest problems and that there are multiple ways for us to be able to use uh our business as a a force for good in the world uh, what are what are some of those ways what are some of the you know for for the entrepreneurs that are out there for those that are looking to to strike it out on their own, what are some of the ways that they can create a business that becomes a force for good? It's a great question. I mean, uh, there's, you know, there's not a lot, to be honest, of information around yeah. how to go and do that. But there is, 
there's a few, you know, there's multiple different models and ways in which you can integrate no, and it calls into your brand in a way which is relevant. It's really important that it has to be relevant because otherwise it doesn't resonate with your customers and it ends up you know not working out so well. But I really find it goes it comes down to you as a person. You know, what is your vision? What are your values? What is your purpose? Who do you want to help? You know, if you a really powerful exercise which I really highly recommend people to do, which I I, I found from a book called Living Forward, and it's also in the, the Seven Habits mm. of Successful People. Uh, it's a process where you, it might sound a little bit morbid, but mm-hmm. you basically envision you envision your own your own funeral, you know, and you basically the process is you're walking, you, you envision that you're in church, you walk down, you see all your family there, and you basically you see yourself in the casket, and then you have your friends, your family people that you love read a eulogy and writing them eulogies from each one of the, uh, each one of the people really helped me uh, really create, you know, how I want my life to, you know, the end of my life, this is how I want it to be, this is how I want people to feel, this is how I want to have showed up. And that really helped me and re- really connect to my big why of, you know, children that are suffering in the world, it's not okay. And we're in a place and you know, time now where it's, you know, it shouldn't be happening. So that was a way on how I really created the, the why for me and what, based on me as a person, you know, and, and what children mean to me. Um, so that was how I created it. How to integrate it is, is multiple different ways. Is There's a great book called Evolve Enterprise by a guy called Yannick Silver, mm-hmm. who has uh, created, you know, 12, you know, created and just basically highlighted the 12 or so models you can use to integrate giving or you know, use your business as a force, but you've got the traditional ways like the, the all profits go to charity, like Paul Newman, he was my, my ultimate inspiration. Paul Newman was a, you know, actor, racing car driver, director, but he also created Newman's Own. You guys will be familiar mm-hmm. with, the, with the brand. Mm-hmm. So it's a uh, all profits go to charity where it's literally everything was uh, donated forward to help children in, uh, who were terminally ill initially. It was, uh, He's got some books which are just incredible. I recommend you to read them. There was uh, you know, the more famous and more commonly known brands like Tom's. You do one for one. It's a really simple model, and it's a great way on how to engage consumers with the benefactors so they can you know, feel good about their, their purchases. Yeah. So uh, there's, 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 there's multiple different models, but there's just a couple. That's great. Uh, um, and those are those are some great resources. Uh, again, for everybody, the you know the the one book that you you first mentioned in terms of the exercise of of kind of picturing your eulogy was Living Forward. Uh, there's multiple practices that are out there like that, which are important because it you know sometimes it's it's we get this orientation of we're going to get to that, we will do that one day. But as opposed to when we when we fast forward to the end of life and we look backwards, it creates that different sense of urgency, that different sense of no, you know what, I'm not going to wait. I, I want to start moving on this. So it's a it's a great type of exercise to go through in that regard. Uh, the other book that you mentioned was Evolved Enterprise by Yannick Silver. Uh, another really great book. It does. It lays out some great models for social impact businesses. Uh, and uh, and that can give, you know, really get the juices flowing for those of you that are uh, already in business and looking to how to tie it more to social impact, uh, as well as for those of you that are looking to design a company and, and get out and strike it out on your own. Uh, I guess, you know, one of, Aaron, one of the other things that I wanted to, to make sure that we got to was the, I said it a bit before, uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, but honestly, I think there's almost everybody out there that has that similar thought of if I only had more time. Uh, and I know one of the things that you do the, the consulting and coaching on with your clients uh, is something you instituted for yourself. You now work with clients of how to free up as much as 10 hours a week so that they can work in their genius zone. And I was hoping you could just spend a little bit of time talking about you know what, what you see as somebody's genius zone and then how do we free up the time so that we can really make the commitment to, to moving these dreams and moving these businesses forward? Absolutely. No, this is something I, I love to help people with, uh, with my clients and you know, anyone I meet. So really, uh, I think it's important just to define what your genius zone yeah. is. Um, I, for me, um, my opinion is that working in your genius is working on things where time disappears, things that energize you, not drain your energy, but things where... You know, you know, you're working on it, you do your best work. Nobody can do that thing as good as you do it. 
and it's what really makes you feel feel makes you happy when you spend time working on that thing or then things that is uh, you know it's usually high value activities which are going to give you great progress and things that actually really energize you so that's my definition of working in your genius zone and how to actually utilize that you know to its, to its maximum really starts with getting a, a really clear picture of where, where you spend your time currently. So one of the exercises I do with, with my clients is just give them a few days to just track where, you know, where they spend their time. And it does sound at the front like it can be a bit of a, a challenge, but every, it's just a simple, simple way you've got apps to track you know, every time you, you, you change different tasks. And it really gives you clarity on where you're, where you're spending your time. And once you've, once you've got a download, you know, and you've got a history of you know, a few days, um, you, can, you can then start to add to it as well um, from, you know, the last couple of weeks or months, the, the tasks that you do on a daily, weekly, a monthly basis. So you should have, you know, a download of, of things that you do and how long you kind of spend on each, each, uh, each kind of task. Then it's really just about highlighting the ones which are, you know, high, highly... Um, frequent things that happen daily uh, and weekly at uh, low value, and really, you most people are going to probably know straight up the things that they do which drain their energy, which really annoys them and irritates them when they're doing that particular task or thing, and it's something which you know it, it doesn't it doesn't move you towards where you want to go. So it's really about just highlighting them, their particular um, tasks or activities that you do. And getting rid of them, getting someone else to do them, uh, whether it's in your, your your personal life or whether it's in your uh, professional life. I help make people mainly with you know, business, so in that regard, it's highlight the things that you want to get rid of, and then effectively outsource it or, or delegate it to uh, a virtual team member um, or you know somebody you know in your locality to so you remove that from your from your workflow. Excellent. You know, it's and it's it's one of the things because I know a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs are always questioning. You know, how is it that I'm I'm able to delegate and 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 move some of this stuff out or outsource this? But I think it's one of the benefits which you have highlighted so well of a global economy is that there's there's a lot of help around the world. There's a lot of different help for different budgets that are out there. There's many different ways to get this thing done so that you can free up that time because if it's truly high value time, then spending your time there is going to produce you a whole lot more than you need to pay for somebody else to do that work. Uh, and that's a big piece of how you're helping them leverage their time. Uh, you know, the other the other thing that that's just brought to mind in terms of not only getting that clarity and awareness of, of where you're spending your time, what you can free up, uh, but some of the research that's out there now in terms of uh, really the energy that we put into our productivity, because the more that we're in flow, the more that we're engaged, we can actually get done in five hours what, you know, a normal day would take eight if we're in the right, right state of mind, state of energy, state of being, as it were, to get that work done. And that's a whole other you know, part of clarity and awareness of how you can be more optimal in the way you're getting work done, which then frees up a lot more time to have you know, the, the big value time, thinking time, and impact time uh, that we've been chatting about. Uh, one of the other things, and, and uh, Aaron, just as we, we start to, to wrap a few things up, one of the things you mentioned before that sounds like it feeds into you know, your motivation, your energy, your vision, your drive, and everything else, is that you mentioned a morning ritual. And I was wondering if you could just expand a little bit on that because that's something that we hear you know, a lot of on this show that's really important for, for highly successful individuals, uh, professionals, entrepreneurs such as yourself is this morning ritual. Absolutely. Uh, morning rituals was something I really first started to learn about in 2013. And it was, it was really from Tony Robbins. I went to one of his seminars and it was the, the, you know, the very first point which started to get me on this path of um, connecting with my my vision on a daily basis, but my morning ritual is you know I, I know it inside out. I can do it with my eyes closed now because it's it's just in it's ingrained as a habit. But I wake up, have a a, a lemon water, and then I go to a after I've read my book, I, I start to have I go through a process which have, has meditative qualities, but it's really what I call my my heart hour of power. It was. You know, taken from uh, the big Tony Robbins, and basically it's walk, working through a process of gratitude first. Think about three people or three things that I'm grateful for. Could be anything. Could be 
you know, uh, someone who smiles or smiled at me the day before. It could be, you know, my, my daughter. It could be anything. So I'll go through three uh, things I'm grateful for. I really envision them. And that should be quite an emotional experience. And it really sets, uh, you know, you, you on an amazing uh, level to be able to you know, move forward in the day. The second part of that half hour of power is sending love and energy to people that I have in my life that, you know, I that are close to my heart or people people that are not. I, I envision uh, I envision them in my life and then send them love to them energetically in a way which which you know it comes from my heart. It's, it's something which I found and it, it really works well as well if you have a challenge with somebody. Um, I found you know that that point in my med- in my meditation, so to speak, my half hour of power. It's really great to you know use that and help to give and forget things uh, and overcome that kind of challenge. The third part of the half hour of power is. This, you know, what I envision, I, you know, my, my, uh, my big why, what I want to get done, uh, envisioning my goals, my outcomes as if they've already achieved, and celebrating them, and I envision myself celebrating them as if they've already been completed. So that's the, the half hour of power. Then it's working out, working out, which is done on a daily basis, and then after that, you know, I connect with my, my day ahead. So. That's what my usual mornings look like. Excellent. Hopefully that was clear. Yeah, no, that was fantastic, Aaron. I appreciate that. And, you know, as, as we, as we start to kind of draw our interview to a close, some of the things I love asking about is, you know, at this point in, in your life and in your career, what is it that matters most to you? What matters, matters most to me is happiness and fulfillment. Mm-hmm. It's something which regularly, you know, I can overlook through having big dreams, big goals, and having a mindset where it's all go and it's quite you know, an aggressive uh, uh, mindset to have, you know, to to go and execute certain things to make make things happen. But be reminded that this is as good as it gets right now. Right now is as good as it's going to get. Um, and what I mean by that is happiness is now. Happiness is not a destination. It's a journey and. Being an unreasonably happy man is something, you know, for no reason. Being absolutely fulfilled in everything is something which I'm striving towards and I'm, you know, it's something I try and get and remind myself of, you know, each and every day. Again, it, it's not always that easy, but it's something which, which is uh, really important to me. How, how, you know, is, how, is, how do you remind yourself of it? How do you keep, you know, your focus on that? How do you keep that front and center? It's really about having awareness. I know um, it comes back to awareness and consciousness and, and, and really just slowing down a lot of the time and just taking a step, uh, taking a moment to, to be grateful. Just, just be, be present instead of living in the future or living in the past, what could happen in the future or what has happened in the past. The, the, only, the only time right now is now, right? Yeah. It is, the future's a dream, kind of like a dream, and the past it feels like a dream too. Right now is the only, the only time it really matters. Mm. So, uh, using trying to be present in the moment to use that to guide me towards my my big vision of you know my big why, uh, and, and that enables me to make decisions through the day which will help me get there in, in a much happier and fulfilled state. Aaron, that's a good point for for us to be able to bring it around full circle. And so, what would you say is your meaningful way? My meaningful way is to to love fiercely, you know, love. Sorry, my, my meaningful way is to love fiercely, laugh hard, and to follow your heart and, and really show up in the world as if you know it was your last day. Outstanding, Aaron. Thank you not only for the the experiences, the the wisdom that you've shared with us today on the meaningful way, but thank you for the impact that you are making, having on the world, and helping other business owners, and entrepreneurs, to have in the world. Luke, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm very grateful for being on the show today and excited to connect in the future. Excellent. You know, for everybody out there, uh, as you can tell, there's there's a whole lot of uh, insight and inspiration from today's call uh, to be able to think about whether you're an entrepreneur and even if you're not an entrepreneur, just to be able to think about how is it that you want to have impact on this world and what are the ways for you to be able to bake it into whatever it is that you do uh, for those that are the entrepreneurs to figure out how it can actually literally be part of your business to whether it be give back or to impact in some way. 
And, you know, I, I honestly, I'd encourage you to go back and, and listen to the description of the morning practice, the morning ritual as well, uh, because taking yourself through that half hour of gratitude, of sending out love and kindness, and, and to be able to envision, to connect to your why, to see what it is that you want to accomplish and see it as already completed and celebrating that is an extremely powerful practice to adopt. And so I hope that you have enjoyed everything in this episode as usual. And until next time, continue to enjoy the journey. Thanks for tuning in to The Meaningful Way. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and please subscribe and follow along with all these great guests, their stories and interviews. Also, it helps us a lot if you not only share some of your favorite episodes online, but also provide us feedback. Go into iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite podcast app happens to be and rate the show. Provide us some feedback and let us know how it is that we're doing. If you want to learn more about what we're up to, whether it be with the IPEC Coach Training School, the Live, Lead, Play Network, or even just what's evolving with The Meaningful Way, go on and head on over to LukeIorio.com. Music.